Okay, I'm uh, I'm back. I'm going to do a, a quick demonstration here. Um, the streaming speed is not quite uh, as fast as the speed as if I just do a, a regular capture. Uh, it seems to be dropping a lot of quality, so hopefully the quality here won't be too bad. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start to create a new game, and I'm just going to call this one test new game all right and there we start off with a blank game and let's put the start point right in the middle and the character uh, on the start point and so now I'm going to show you how everything works in the game um, this is the background editor, as you can see, you can move this section around, and we're looking at a section of the screen here. These buttons here move around what part of the screen that we're looking at. So as you can see, that it's a combination of moving, so if we wanted to move to the top left corner there, we'd move all the way over here, and all the way up, and we'd be there. So we moved to right about here. As you can see, we're on that cloud, so if we wanted to draw something on that cloud, we want to edit the background. We'll just uh, draw, and as you can see, up there on the cloud, we've made whatever this is. I don't know. I guess we'll make a mean face on the cloud. The cloud is very angry. And then you can see up here in the corner, we've got uh, an angry cloud. Um, so that would, you know, it'll be saved automatically, and this is a new background. But if you want to, um, probably the best thing to do is just make your background uh, in a more powerful program, um, something like GIMP or Photoshop. You can go right in here and uh, just load up the background. And so what I'll do is I'll show you that real quick. We'll go into the Games folder and we'll find the um, the one for. Let's see. How about Purgatory? We'll open that up see here we'll scroll down and find the background and we have a preview here of the background and we'll click load and now our background if we go out of the menu you can see this is now a background it's a pretty uh, pastel thing that I painted in uh, I think either the Photoshop or GIMP I'm not sure but um, and if we want to go back to our old background that we were just on open the folder and of course it didn't uh, didn't actually uh, save that background with the angry face on it but that's okay so we change backgrounds otherwise it automatically saved I'll we'll go back down here that's the background tiles and find a background and that's our standard uh, kind of generic background here what it looks like. Um, so that's how background works. You just load in background, whatever you want. And the background tiles are basically, um, they go behind the player. So hopefully the stream is still working. So basically you're in play mode as soon as you move the player. As soon as you start using the editor, and um, you can't see this, but I'm right clicking with the mouse to open and close the toolbox. You can also do that with the T key toolbox and I think it's F1 F1 is uh, uh, toolbox is uh, F2 and help is F1 so um, escape of course brings up your menu and hopefully you will click on this and help get the game greenlit so that I can add the Steam Workshop and add trading cards and achievements and all that fun stuff but right now um, what I'm going to do is show you how you would make something on the background Go ahead and grab each one of these tiles. And copy these tiles. And you don't even have to, if you click here and then you click here, it knows that you want to be back in the game to edit. So it automatically just uh, goes there. If you click outside of the interface here, you click outside of the interface, it says, oh, he wants to be over here. So 
Um, and as you can see, now we move our player, and that is behind the player. And he can jump in front of it. So you can load the whole background, and you can also use tiles to fill in um, to fill in your background. You can do something like this, where I'm putting a bunch of dirt tiles. And then you add a little flavor to it with some of the ones that have... Like this is kind of uh, bones. You add these, and it kind of makes it uh, breaks up the repetition. So it's good design to add a little bit of. Uh, and we can zoom in here so we can see this this better. I'm playing this at 1080p, so um, basically I'm zoomed in full. This is uh, this is what it looks like. And again, the player's walking, you know, in front of these things. Now if we go to our um, normal tiles, these are the ones that uh, are in the middle distance where the player is. So we go back to our normal tiles and when you start to edit it zooms out so you can see everything. And I would just make some of these normal tiles here. And as you can see, the player has collision with these and can walk on them. And that just leaves our foreground tile. So let's say that we wanted this to be a grassy. We want this to be a little bit grassy here. And then we'll again break it up by putting a little plant in the middle there. Zoom in. And you can see he's walking behind these. So another thing you can do with the foreground tiles that's kind of fun, you can go in here and uh, you go to a, a new tile all these ones say edit me they are not saved if they have not been altered they are not saved so your game um, has the smallest uh, um, file possible so I don't I don't save all these ones that you haven't touched yet so we'll go ahead and uh, click on new and this will blank this out completely and then I'll go in here I'll go into my color editor and I'll say okay I want blue I want blue because I'm gonna make a window and then I'll go to my editor and as you can see oh look it's the you know blue window blue okay so I want to make the whole thing this color of blue and then what I will do is I'll go back in here and I will change the transparency and I'm gonna make the transparency like less than 128 and I'll use the paint bucket and I'll paint back at that. Now as you can see it turned lighter. This is the, the background of the editor that you're seeing there. So then what I can do is I'll go to the pencil tool and I'll take this color and I'll change it back to fully opaque and I will lower the value which is this basically you think about how dark it is. And I'll go back to my pencil tool I'm going to use the retro filter because that makes big blocks and I want to make big blocks right now. You can do that like that. You can also use the retro filter to make uh, even bigger blocks. You can see there. Um, so I like the medium one. So I want to color this in. I'm going to use the medium on the retro filter. And what I've done here is I've made a little tile and I'm going to take that little tile and go like this and of course it uh, replaces the other ones that I just did and as you can see here when I zoom in and as soon as I start moving the player we're back in the play mode and I zoom in and you can see that this is the foreground but because I made the partially transparent you can see the player walking behind it and you can see through it. So here's a little bit lighter. I probably would take that and uh, make that a little bit darker and add a little more. Um. So I'll go back in the color tool and I'll open this up. Use the eyedropper to grab the old color. And then take the color, just gonna take it to like, well, I think we used 120 last time, so we'll try 180. Okay, I'll do 180 and then grab my paint bucket. Okay, 
so that gives me a little more opacity. So when we go back there, okay, that looks a little more like a window. He's kind of more, you know, it seems like he's more, uh, um, it's more obvious the transition between here and here. So, um, and you can do this on any of them. You could do this on the background tiles if you want. You could do this on foreground tiles. Uh, you just have to make sure the foreground tiles are at least, uh, I think, past uh, 128 so that they'll act as solid. Because if they're less than that, then the game might see them as see-through. So, but uh, that's how you do that with the transparent ones. Um, added some vines in here so now you can go in here uh, and uh, these are all set to ladders basically it acts like a ladder so I could make a vine here and obviously if I wanted to make this uh, prettier you're gonna go in and, and you know add a, change it up a little bit so that you're not using the same tile next to each other and then that looks a lot more natural. And now you have a vine that the guy can climb up and down. So there's that. And then, of course, I added uh, some of these for the hand-over-hand -hand thing. So the character can... Uh, And if you want to, a shortcut that you can use, um, I'm not sure if I put it in the documentation, I think I did, but if, it, you know, if, I, if I press the control key, I hold the control key down, it turns into an eraser. And then I can erase the layer that I'm on, and I think uh, if I hold down shift, then it erases all levers, all the, the layers. It's either, it's one or the other. One erases all the layers and the other erases just the layer that you're on. So if you're working with certain tiles, you want to um, erase just those tiles. So, so here we can see um, what the hand over hand look like. The guy doesn't always jump to exactly the right spot. I'm still working on that. But uh, you can crawl across those with those new graphics. Um, Let's see here. And added a few new hazard tiles. Um, so that's a little grouping of hazard tiles. And basically how your hazard tiles work is that's all of your spikes and nasty things like that you can hurt yourself with. And how these work is that the last uh, last checkpoint you touched is where you go when you get hurt by something. So as you can see I'm back at the start point. Now the start point, there can only be one start point and you have a choice of graphics on it but this is the basic start point point. and if I go in here and I say okay I want my start point to be here you see the one up here disappeared and if I change my mind I put it back it, uh, there's only one start point so you can't really get... Uh... so now if I if I die here well that's strange to go to that start point now. Let's see about that. Save it real quick and reset it. Reset it and there's the start point. So uh, start point apparently doesn't update immediately, but there we are, we're back at the start point. So um, and then you also have uh, endpoints here and you have checkpoints. So checkpoint is uh, basically touches the checkpoint and now when he dies he goes back to the checkpoint instead of the start point so um, the other ones are these ones basically you can use to communicate information to the player uh, this works like a, a text box and you just type in what you want to put in that text box like uh, okay, oh, spikes <laughs> something like that now we take that text box and we put it right here and as our player walks towards those, look out, spikes! And of course, he doesn't listen, gets killed anyway. But <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's that. Um, as you can see, that the, the the graphic is whatever you want it to be. You can edit these to be anything that you want. So um, in here, you 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 change them by uh, like if you wanted like these are hand over hand because he's going to use that 
hand over hand motion on these. Um, these are firefighter pole, which is like um, when you grab the firefighter pole, you just automatically slide down. And then there's text, uh, text blocks, start points, checkpoints, and then we have uh, end points. Uh, climbable, forgot about climbable. Climbable is kind of like a ladder, except that he can climb or she or it. Uh, you can put, you know, you can make anything you want. You can make a bunny rabbit character or anything. That... Climbable works like this. You can climb across it. And you see some of these things like in, uh, in Mario games where uh, where he climbs across stuff like this. A ladder is more designed where he's going to be in the middle. Uh, if I do a ladder um, like this blue ladder here I'll show the difference. You make a ladder, and the ladder, he kind of snaps to the middle of the ladder. Because uh, you basically just go up and down on that, whereas a, on a climbable, he can go anywhere. So that's the difference. If you want it to be, you know, if you want your ladders to act like climbables, that's fine. You can do that, whatever you want to do. Um, but with the endpoints, the endpoint is how you win the game. So you basically, uh, well, I don't want to change that to an endpoint. I want to keep that a climbable. Okay. But you have an endpoint. Let's say you want to use this checkered flag as your endpoint. And you say, okay. Uh, if I could stop clicking the wrong thing. Okay. So there's the endpoint. And the player hits the endpoint. And right now I've just got this text that comes up says you win and it tells you how long you were playing and it tells you how many times you died so um, obviously you want to um, have as few deaths as possible <laughs> and that's kind of your way of getting a high score is to have you know get through the, the levels with as few deaths as possible um, and there's other things that you can do with the endpoints which um, I'll show you right now like let's say that we wanted to do um, a warp which is where we're gonna set the warp to over here and then this is the one that we added the warp to that graphic and I will go ahead and also set this one as a warp to the same place for that same graphic because I want to use a double double high graphic and then what uh, well since I already did you win then we had to go reset the game so okay reset and we're it's a, a brand new game first I'm going to uh, erase this so we don't accidentally win okay all right now if we hit the warp what will happen is we warp to the location that we selected and the other thing you can do with that um, is you can use endpoint go to game which if I click that and I set that to one of these tiles then when I place the tile it will load whatever game you type in in the endpoint go to game so there's a text field that comes up and uh, I'm going to do that because we want to stay in this game for now so um, but that that's the way that if you want to do multiple levels if you want to do like um, you know if you're doing a game that that's multiple levels instead of just uh, one screen game you can do that you can just uh, you know transition to another level um, and it will load up whatever other level you want when you touch the endpoint so okay that's uh, about all I'm going to show on there right now I think uh, where we talked about hazard tiles okay on platforms is basically uh, one kind of object is a platform now let's say we have this uh, this platform here Put that. Eh, where am I going to put that? I guess we'll put it right here. Pick it up. Let's show you the uh, how platforms work. I mean, basically, when you place your platform in the screen, you can pick it up and move it around. Decide wherever you want to put it. When you put it down, you can click this button here and it makes it go away. That'll erase the object. And these buttons here. If I click the one in the middle, that means I don't want it to move at all. And you notice if I click these other ones, it shows where it's going to move to. So here I'm going to say, okay, it's moving to the right. 
and the distance it's moving is right here. So if I want it to move less distance, I just change that. And if I want it to move more distance, I just change the number the other way. What I'm going to do is have it move to the left. And the speed it's going to move is at 1. So 1 unit. And now when I go back in, whenever you're done, you just click this. And see, now, now it's got another one loaded up. So if I, I place another one, there's another one. So I'll get rid of that. I'm going to go back into my tiles. And I'm going to grab a tile here. And I'm going to put I'm going to put a few tiles there so my guy can go up and walk on it. And immediately, as soon as I start moving the character, it knows that I want to be in character mode. And uh, Also, when you're in here and you're working with tiles, you have a, a button here. You can press the Alt button, and it will change you from tile. So I'm going to draw a couple tiles. I'm going to go to object mode and place an object. I want to go back into tile mode, draw tiles, back into object mode. So I'm pressing the Alt key there, and I think also, yeah, I have it also set to middle mouse button does the same thing. So we can go in and uh, erase all this stuff where we're playing around. Uh, and if you use the eraser, if you use the eraser on an object, you have to be in object mode, but if you use the eraser on an object, it will also erase that object. So we'll go back to our object here, and we want it to go back and forth or we want it to go one way. Now if we say we want it to go one way, let's watch what happens there. See, it starts over at the beginning when we say we want to go one way. And if we click our mouse, it goes back to the original position so that we can grab a hold of it. Because you can actually set these to go really fast. And if you do that, There's really no way you could get a hold of it, so <laughs> that's why I made it so that uh, that it stops. Now, if we set the speed to zero, it doesn't matter what this is up here because it's not going to move at all. So what we want is a back and forth. We want it to move. We want that that thing to to move back and forth, and uh, so our player can can jump on it. Now we also have stuff like icy and sticky, which I don't think I showed this, but uh, you can do this with the. Uh, let me show you that on tiles real quick. Um, as you can see in the tiles, it's set in properties. And as you see these white ones, they're set to icy. Because um, basically it's uh, <laughs> it's going to be, you know, winter and it's it's icy and slick. So you can also do sticky, um, like if you're walking in jelly or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what would be sticky tar, I guess. Uh, bouncy. We use bouncy on these ones here. We'll set this back to icy slick. Like these ones are bouncy. Whenever the player touches these, whenever the character touches these, they automatically bounce up. And conveyor belt is like these ones here. The conveyor belt, uh, and you can also change the strength. The conveyor belt is just what it sounds like if your player stands on these. Uh, if you play the Proving Grounds of the Mad Game Developer, there's conveyor belts in there. So you can do the same sort of thing to your objects. You can make them icy, sticky, or bouncy, or you can make them act like a conveyor belt. You also have the option, and here with the conveyor belt, you can change the strength. You either move left or right, and how strong they are. Um, if you have a, uh, you can have the ability to make the platform disappear. So that way, um, if you have a, a game where you want the platform to disappear and reappear, um, this is the amount of frames before it disappears. And this is the amount of frames before it reappears. So if we go back into the game, move the character, we'll see that that is now disappearing and reappearing. And you can also do fall away, which is um, the delay until it falls away and until it comes back. And I'll show you what that does. That basically is like this. You see, the character touched it and it did follow it, which is basically... So, you know, if you have one of those games where you've got multiple platforms where 
okay, I want to put a platform here, platform here, platform here, and I want the character to jump on the platforms, but then as he jumps on them, I want them to fall away. That's how you would set that up. Uh, so basically you, you go in there and you change the, uh, the delay. The delay is how long after the character touches it does it fall. In this case, uh, it's set to 60, which uh, the game runs at 60 frames a second, so I believe it's like a one second delay there. And then time until the platform comes back, 180, I think is basically three seconds. So um, I turn that off and put our platform down. And our character can run and jump on the platform to go wherever it is that he wants to go. So that's how platforms work. Uh, there's a bunch of different platform graphics um, to do that and plenty of extra empty space if you want to make something different. Uh, moving hazards are essentially um, anything that... Uh, that moves and they're set up the same kind of way as the other type of object, the platform. Um, as you can see here, this one, we'll set this for back and forth. We'll make it go that way and we'll say, okay, we only want it to go from here to here, but we want it to go there a little bit faster and you can also make it disappear and reappear so if you want to have an object that that you know one that disappears and then it reappears periodically you can do that make that endpoint thing go away so I don't accidentally hit it so and uh, so basically as you can see this is a uh, I'll zoom in see that object moves back and forth. So I think uh, for something like this you probably don't want it to move that fast but you know you're, you're welcome to make it move however whatever speed you want and on the uh, hazards you can also make the move extra slow here if you go to less than one like uh, here and go to point five and close this when I move the character you can see that that's really creeping now and it looks like it's one pixel above, so I'll grab it. And uh, something that I added was you can use the cursor keys when you're in this mode and you have an object selected. I'll press the down key one time. And what that did, if we zoom back in, you can see that it's, it's exactly where it should be now. So if you want to find position your object, you go into the object mode, you select the object, and you can press the cursor keys to move that object around. So in this way you, you can set the object exactly where you want it. So you say, okay, well I want this to go all the way to the very edge here and start there. It's based on the, the, the objects are based on the, where the middle of the object is. So you can see it's moving back and forth there. So what we want to do is jump over it and crawl on our platform. Okay. So that's how a moving hazard works. And a rotating hazard is very similar to a moving hazard. The difference is that it rotates, obviously. And as you can see here, we have uh, a preview that shows you what the object looks like rotating and uh, it rotates this way and it's showing you where the anchor point is and the anchor point I'll show you how that works as you can see that if I click these presets the anchor point changes so if I select the preset at the bottom you can see the little dot is right here and it's anchoring it at the bottom of that giant axe now if for some reason we have a funny shaped object we can come in here and change where that anchor point is. We just click custom anchor and then you just click wherever you want it. So if we wanted it for some reason to spin around the back like it's held on there, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you wanted to do that you could. So if you want to come in here, you know, it depends on this also helps to get your get it exactly where you want it. 
see how that's working there if you use the custom anchor I mean if you just use the center you're going to use that most of the time you can see the center dot is there but if it's off by a little bit you can use this custom anchor to go in and change that position so we'll go ahead and set this back to there that dot then we'll go out of here and we'll say okay I'm going to put this right about here and I want it to rotate clockwise now if I set it to rotate counterclockwise and we'll see when we go back into gameplay oh look it's going the wrong way that's pretty silly <laughs> okay so we go in here obviously you know you you want to use a graphic that uh, makes it go the way that, that you want it to and you can also with these objects you can also have them Right now the distance is set to zero, but if you want to, you can have something that spins and rotates. I mean, spins and moves. And you have speed here, and you also have rotation speed. So rotation speed is going to start out at uh, one. It looks like I got a little aliasing there. I need to clean that graphic up a bit. So along the edges, didn't notice that until now. But we'll go in there and we'll change the rotation speed let's make it go really fast so obviously we want something in between because we want our player to be able to our character we want our character to be able to not get killed by that every time so again use the position uh, precision adjustment and the midpoint is based on the midpoint of the graphic so when we go back in there you see that the that the midpoint of the graphic was right here and that's where the anchor ends up being right there so make it more fair I'm gonna go in here and ah, okay so control is just the layer that you're on and shift is all layers so shift will erase all layers um, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that so that we don't have to deal with that touch the checkpoint and as you can see you got whacked and died so now if you're if you're you know if you're if you're you're making a game and this is one of your your items um, in the game one of your hazards you probably want to you don't really want to show this part like as you can see it moving you see this part right here you don't really want to show that you probably want to cover that with something so what you can do is you'll come in and say let's say um, oh heck let's just use a crate because it's funny um, we'll copy the crate and you can use the copy button you basically you just you, you select whatever you want and you go to the copy tool and you click copy and then you go over here to foreground tiles let's say and you click paste and when you click paste now this is in there as a foreground tile and it will act as a foreground tile so if we we come in here and we put that box there and then we'll go back to object mode and we'll as you can see here I'm holding it right there that should be where the yep right there is the center of the object so I'll put this right in the center of that object or in the center of that crate so as I've done that then see I've kind of hidden that behind that so it doesn't look so I guess funny that there's you know and you, you probably want to make this crate into something that kind of fits the the uh, the way the, 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 the you know something that matches with the the blade graphic and makes sense for your game so as you can see then in the game you have that object moving around and that's how that works and I think we already talked about how the um, foreground tiles work and how you can um, add transparency you know put a little 
and it's independent of the other stuff so you see I can just you know I can have a checkpoint behind a fence I can have uh, my uh, you know tool tips or whatever come up my um, communication with the player uh, and you can layer the graphics so that you basically have multiple layers and different you know stuff like that um, I haven't really gone over the the uh, how the sound works. I have the music turned off because uh, the music is uh, I'm not really sure how to attribute that. It's attributed in the game, but uh, I'm not really sure how to do that for YouTube videos. So I'm just going to leave the music off um, and show you how you would do the sounds. Um, here's a preview button. <coughs> Click the button. <coughs> hear what the jump sound is. The hurt sound is the sound it makes when he gets hurt and you set to a checkpoint. Now, if you want to go in here and load a new sound. I don't have anything in my import directory right now, but if I did have something in my import directory, you can see this uh, on my, uh, this is my hard drive. <laughs> so, as you can see, you can just go right into your hard drive and, and pick whatever you want out of here. So, um, and then a little preview would come up, or you can preview the sound, and when you decide upon the sound, then it replaces the original. Um, so now I'll go back and show you how the character screen the improvements to that. Um, and now it shows you what the what the the tiles, what the individual um, character frames are doing. So at the top we see this is our run, and you see the preview over on the right. You can see that these are the four frames of the run, and you can also click now on the character animation toggle, and it will show you the character doing whatever the motion is. So like with the hand over hand, that's what that looks like in motion. And also you have a quick preview right here. But here you've got, you know, and you can see it in the uh, 1x, 2x, and 4x as it will appear in the game. And if you go in and you edit in there, and you take your, 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 uh, I still got that other color. So I'll change that. Just use the dropper grab the black and you could see in this frame when you go back out and that frame is like that and you'll see that shows up immediately in the animation preview that we put a big ugly thing there so erase it look at our preview now it's not there and so that will show you and you know this is dynamic so if you just go right here and you change it to any of these you're going to immediately see what that looks like so it should be a little easier to edit the character and um, and all that and be able to see what the motion looks like so I think that's about it I think I've run through everything um, as far as the how the tiles work and how all the objects work in the game and all that um, and you know how the rotation works and obviously I need to clean up that graphic there where there's a little aliasing on the sides uh, um, so that's that's uh, about it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed watching this, and uh, I hope that you uh, will vote for the game on Steam Greenlight here, so uh, it can get on Steam. Uh, I would love to add uh, Steam Workshop so that you can just make a level and immediately uh, upload it so other people can play it. And I would like to add achievements and trading cards also. So um, if you would. Uh, Vote for the game on Steam Greenlight, that would be great. And if you have any questions about the game or uh, anything that you'd like to see in the game or anything like that, please let me know. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye-bye.